this nine-year-old little girl that we literally brought out of sexual slavery, um, so traumatized in that she couldn't stand any form of human contact uh, whatsoever and totally nonverbal, and um, which is something kind of common with a lot of the little girls and little boys that we rescue. And what people say is, well, it, you know, they're mentally retarded and they have really bad, and, and, and they're not, they're just traumatized. And um, in some cases they actually are and people take advantage of them. But in a lot of these cases, they just have gone into a survival place that they you know, don't know how to get out of. And also too, I want you guys to think about this too. I mean, like our grandkids, um, if they have to be exposed and engaged and stimulated in a lot of different ways so that they just get smart, right? Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you know, hey, you gotta be constantly talking colors, you gotta be constantly talking numbers, you gotta be talking, hey, this is English and this is Spanish and this is how this works and this is how red light works, it's green light now, now we go. If we go, we push on this paddle, if we stop. I mean, you do that all day long. These kids have been in a room their entire life and have never had any of that. All they've had is the experience of being molested multiple times a day and being prostituted. So they have no experience with human beings outside of a terrible sexual context. And so they think that that's the world. And so because of that, when you bring them out of that and you set them in a room and all the kids are playing, they just sit there with their mouth open and they stare at the wall because they have never had, it's like like right now, you're, me and you are talking, and Leanna is, spawned, Leanna is responded by smiling and going, yes, yes, yes. You're responded by going, wow, 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 yeah. right? You're lifting your, eye, yeah. you're lifting your, right. your eyebrows. Right. You know that from having human contact. Totally. And you do that over and over and over again until that becomes who you are and what you do. These kids have never had any of that. So what they do is they sit with their mouth open and they stare at the wall. And it's not that there's anything wrong with them, it's they have had no human contact or experience. Are, so are you guys tracking with me? So you understand what a big deal that is? In, in the foster home that Leanna grew up in, they would get, uh, her parents were the foster parents, they would get kids in that were like, oh, when, when, whenever you and I were dating, and you're begging me to marry you, yes, and we were teenagers. I'm please, glad it worked. Oh my God, you. please today, Thank she would say today. You. You're welcome, it's, you. you're welcome. And so, we were my rescuer. <laughs> so I please marry me, my God, my God, today. So we were so teenagers, grateful. and and we had there were some kids that we that your parents got, and who had never been outside of a closet, and 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 we and so we we have experience with this. So we recognize it all over the world, and we know about this. Okay. So this little girl, this is what when you have a child that has never been allowed to run and play with other kids or never had anybody speak life into them or try and teach them something or what, you know, any of those things are just like, dude, check out the butterfly. Do you know that there's lots of different kinds of butterflies in the world? All the things that you do with the little boys and little girls. When those kids have never experienced that, I wanna, I wanna show you that picture one more time. This is what they look like. That's what they look like when they come in. Okay, that's three weeks ago. Okay, now let me tell you this. I, I had a simple dream. I was in an interview and I was sitting at this nice table with a nice man and he was a very professional interviewer that was super excited about the content we were talking about. And it was like it was the end of my life. And I was about to go into heaven and for heaven's sake, he was interviewing me to give glory to God about how God moved in my life. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, I love this, let's go, right? And I knew that heaven was listening. And the dream, and he's like, okay, Troy, when I, and he knew everything about my life, so he would say things like, hey, that time that you and Leanna were feeding the homeless people, and this happened and that happened, and you guys were in your, you guys were teenagers, and this, 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 and then that miracle happened, what did you learn about the Father that day, and how do you think the Father's heart was distributed that day? And I'd say, oh, that's easy. And in my dream, I had this ability to be able to recall every way that God had ever moved in my life. And I was like, boom, this way, this way, this way. It was awesome. And then we were talking about um, very difficult things that Leanna and I have been through. And, um, 
you know, just the poverty we face and then facing poverty throughout the world and then all this kind of stuff. And then he was like, how did you find the father in that? And do you remember, I know that you saw this miracle happen. How did that happen? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, boom, I can't say anything wrong. And it's so awesome. And then he said, out of all the miracles you've seen, what do you think are your top 10 favorite miracles? And I just listed my top 10 favorite miracles. And the dream just went by real fast, but all this happened. And then he said, but is there any, is there any miracle you know you would have seen if you would have fought for it, but you gave up the fight and you missed the miracle? And I said, yes. And he said, name me 10 of those and give me your top one. And I instantly knew what they were. And I said in my dream, I said, if I would have found a way to get to the Amazon at the time that Daryl and the team was down there, I, I would have walked straight up to that little girl who would not touch anybody and she would have hugged me like a daddy. And then I would have said, it's okay for you to talk. And she would have started talking. And I said, I wish I hadn't missed that miracle. And then the dream was over. And I can feel the Lord right now. Totally feel Jesus. I mean, I totally feel the anointing. And you guys feel the power of the Lord right now? Because I do. And it was like, I had already given up and Leanna, had, and Leanna and I had already talked, had already spoke about, Troy, why don't you go down there? And I'm like, man, I can't. I, I, my schedule is so crazy and I can't, it's, it's impossible. It, I cannot make that happen. And she's like, you can, you can. I'm like, I can't, I, I cannot do it. I've already missed a couple of Sundays and I can't miss any more Sundays. And uh, people in church are starting to get mad at me. Why well, you gotta go be a missionary? <laughs> and so I'm like, I gotta go appease those people. And, and I'm like, you know, honestly, like, no, you know, I'm, I'm the daddy of this house and, and I'm, I'm gone too much. And I, I, I gotta do this, that, that. And plus I have all these meetings and this thing's gonna happen. And we got, we got vacation Bible school, we got kids camp, we got this, all these other things I gotta be a part of. And I have these conferences and these TV shows and radio. And, and so when I woke up, I was thinking about that conversation and I, I told Leanna, I really think that if I go to the Amazon, if I can find a way, I think two things are gonna happen. I think the Spirit of the Lord is gonna put a daddy's anointing on me that that little girl recognizes me as her dad and she's going to love me and hug me for the very first time and that chain is gonna be broken. And then I think I'm just gonna tell her to talk and I think she's gonna start talking. And you remember that conversation? I do remember it. And then we called Daryl and we said, buy him a ticket. He's leaving to go to the Amazon with you. So boom, I get in a car and I'm telling him, okay, this is the miracle that God told me is going to happen. Yeah. This is going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah. I'm going to go in there and that little girl is going to be in there and I'm going to find her and she's going to recognize I'm her dad and she's just going to supernaturally get over everything that's ever happened and she's going to accept me as her dad and she's going to come running up to me, give me a great big hug and then I'm going to tell her to talk and she's going to start talking and I'm like, woo! And everybody in the car is just looking at me. <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, when did God tell you this? I mean, nobody's doubting what I'm saying. They're like, bro, we've been with this little girl, you know, and she's, you know, bad, she's bad messed up. And they're like, and they're like, we're not doubting what you're saying. Like, so God told you to go give that girl a hug because she doesn't give anybody a hug and yada, yada, yada. I'm like, okay, let me tell you again. I, I think it's gonna happen just like this. I go pulling up whenever we, we went across the border, we go pull, we go driving through this slum, we get up to our rescue home. Our team is out there. And my team that has been out there has been out there all day long. And most of them, it's the very first time that they have ever worked with sexually abused kids. And you have to process it and it's very hard on you. So I got out thinking, you know, theme music was gonna happen when I opened up the door. <laughs> And like, dun, 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 Hawaii 5 right? I'm like, here we go, man, let's do this. And I'm get out, and I'm, I literally get out of the car, and I'm like, woo, the miracle's gonna happen. And dude, everybody, my entire team is like. <laughs> what? And dude, it's because it's so hot, and they have been working so hard, and, and their hearts are broken. And, and they I had been out. there for two or three days. Yeah, they've been there for a long time, neck deep. And guys, 
they're standing out there and there's open sewage everywhere. You're just everybody's standing in sewage working with kids that we pulled out of brothels. And I'm telling you, people who make it look easy, it's not easy. No, it's not. And these guys were feeling it when I pulled up and, and I'm like, here we go, here we go, here comes a miracle, let's go. And I just kind of went, well, okay. So I just went right past everybody. I understood it. And I went right past everybody, man. And I went in there and then Pastor Suwanami is in there. Now, <laughs> Pastor Suwanami, on my most hyper day, Pastor Suwanami is that on steroids, okay? And I walked in, and I was like, here comes a miracle, God's gonna do a miracle. And because I'd had a dream, and God told me to go to the Amazon, and I'm, try- I'm like, believing God. I'm like, I wanna, I wanna stay in that place where I believe this is gonna happen, you know? And, and, and I told Suwanami, I said, Suwanami, I had this dream, and I'm just believing, man, she's gonna come up to me, and she's gonna hug me, and she's gonna love me like a daddy, and she's gonna understand the Father's heart, and then I'm gonna tell her it's okay for her to talk, and she's gonna talk, and this is Suwanami, okay? Oh my God! (laughs) It's a miracle! It's a miracle! Yes, 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 yes! I'm like, okay, I got my jam right here. And she says, she was like, come over here, come over here. And I get it. So we go over there and all these kids and this little girl is sitting there and she is eating ice cream and she's got a bunch of little baby girls around her that she's kind of the nine-year-old mama girl taking care of these other ones. And she's just eating and she's just kind of sitting there and she goes, there's my little friend right there. And dude, I've seen that same picture that you guys are looking at for the past three weeks and I've never seen her. And it's like, you know, meeting Elvis to me. When I meet these girls that I pray over their picture, And I'm praying over and praying over. And when I see them for the first time, I swear, it's like, you know, I'm just like, oh my God, there she is, man. And so I'm just standing there and I start praying in the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying and I'm believing the Lord. God, this is what I came down here for. And this has to happen. I've got to see this happen. This has to happen. And and I want to just tell you, man, I was standing there and Suwanami calls out, and her name's Francis, and she says, Francis, Franciella, and she kind of, she's like this, she kind of looked over at her like this, and she said, look, 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 it's Papa Troy, look, 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 it's Papa Troy, here he is, you know, and she kind of looked over at me, and she kind of looked away, and then she looked back at me, and she locked eyes on me, and I was like, here we go. I, and I can feel the Lord right now. I was like, when she looked away and she looked back and she locked eyes on me and I went. Oh, how can and, you resist that? Like really, come on. And that little girl smiled. She's like, like who's that? And Pastor Suwanami said, Franciella, come over here. This is Papa Troy and he came down here to see you. And that little girl was standing there looking at me and she was smiling. And she stepped down off the deal. And she came across, and as God is my witness, she just hugged me. And, and we were taking pictures. Look. That, that is not how hard I'm hugging her. That's how hard she's hugging me. That. And she would not let me go. And I was like, <laughs> I want to show you another picture too. There's another picture. So she hugs me. So I want to go back to this first picture here <clears throat> where she's hugging me. And that hug is like a three or four minute hug. And she will not let me go. And Giles is there, and Giles is taking photos, and he's taking pictures of all this, and I'm like, all right, all right, first miracle down. It was, and I didn't see it in the dream, I saw me prophesy in the dream. I said, if I would have gone down there, she would have done this, 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 and that, right? And I was like, okay, first miracle down, Second miracle is, I'm supposed to tell her, hey, it's okay for you to talk, and she's supposed to start talking. <laughs> and everybody is freaking out. Her, her workers are all, at first, they all just have their hands over their mouth, and they're just watching this. 
like watching her hug me. And when I kind of went to let her go, I kind of leaned up a little bit and she held on to me so tight her feet came off the ground. And I put her back down on the ground and I just kept on holding on to her. And the Spirit of the Lord was totally healing this girl. I'm not doing any kind of amazing ministry in her life. I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling her, you're a good girl. And she doesn't understand what I'm saying. And I'm just telling her, you are a good girl, and I'm so proud of you. You are such a good girl. And look at you. Look at how pretty you are. You are such a good girl. I finally got to meet you. I'm so happy to finally get to meet you. And so we finally get done with this holy hug. We finally get, and I'm telling you, it was truly a holy hug, y'all. We get done and she's standing there and, you know, she doesn't want to leave me. She's got her arm around me. She's eating her ice cream and she's smiling and everything. And Suwanami, that's Pastor Suwanami, right? Suwanami says, says, are you going to tell her to talk now? And I told her, yes. And I told her, I said, it's, I said, I'm your Papa Troy and it's okay for you to talk. Now that doesn't sound very religious, right? But it wasn't like, you know, I had to put King James on it. I just said, it's okay for you to start talking now. And that little girl, she kind of took a deep breath and she started messing around with her mouth. And she said, Troy. And that, that picture is when she was saying Troy at that moment. And then it was Katie bar the door, okay? Yeah. It was, you know, we started throwing babies in the air. <laughs> Everybody started losing their minds, right? Everybody's like, this little girl is actually talking now, right? And then in that same moment with that same kind of a thing going on, we're talking and she was like, you know, how cool is that? You know, did you hear me talk? And I'm like, I did, it was incredible. Like. Uh, that, that's incredible. I was like that. And I said, I saw you with those little girls over there. And I said, you're such a mama girl. How many little girls do you take care of? And then she says in Spanish, oh, I take care of that one and that one and that one. And this one is so many years old. And that one is so many years old. And this one right over there, he doesn't mind very good, but he's, but he's a good little boy. And he comes to me when I tell him to come to me. And she, and we, she just starts speaking in whole sentences. She starts speaking in paragraphs. And she turns into Chatty Cathy. That's true. So, so there's a lot more goes with that, and I've taken up too much time already. And that's one story. And and uh, I was with about a about 15. I was going to say a dozen, but 15 kids that we've rescued. Um, and I know all their stories. And I have had my heart broken more in the past couple of days than I have in a long, long time, but in a really good way, y'all. In a really, really, really good way. I'm telling you, I saw that miracle happen. I saw it happen. Pastor Suwanmi was right there. She saw it happen. Um, the people, her caretakers saw that happen. And it was a wonder to everybody that that little girl was restored in understanding that the father loves her and in that moment, she understood that it was okay for her to be a little girl. That should have taken years and years and years and years and years to happen. And it happened in a moment because of the manifest presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. And then also for me to just give her permission to talk. 